All right, YouTube, welcome back. It's Saturday, and it's a rainy as Saturday. And we picked up a new wholesale account, Alpha One, uh, in Palmyra on Route 73. And they're just getting started there. And he said that nobody wanted to work with those guys. And I said, I am a used car reconditioned specialist, and I love this type of work. I love it. So what happened is, let's just go through this. My new technician, who obviously needs more training than I thought, was aggravating me to death yesterday. It seems like he hits the retard button after 3 o'clock. Greenhorns. So he did a radiator on this. He has done uh, brake pads, and rear sway bar links, and a caliper. But I was running around yesterday, and I was not here to quality check his work because I need to check everything. And uh, the coolant reservoir is not topped off. It definitely... That's a little hot. So I'm going to give that a minute to cool off. And then we're going to check his other work. So I wanted to do this video out there for people who are doing radiators and necessarily are not technicians or experienced enough to know what they're doing. Every vehicle requires a different bleed and fill procedure and you definitely need to know on today's cars if there is multiple bleeder screws if there is any bleeder screws if there's plugs somewhere that you have to remove because some vehicles require you to remove a plug in the radiator uh when the uh coolant housing somewhere so every vehicle is very specific it's not like the old days where you open the radiator cap and uh Pour some cool on it. The thermostat opens at 160 degrees, even if it has one in it. All right, so the little explanation of older cars. So if you're not driving a older car, which most people aren't, I'm saying old like 60s, 70s, 80s, and into the 90s. And in most cases, there are special bleeding procedures when you replace a component of the cooling system. So this is a Toyota. This vehicle does not have any bleeder screws um, and there's no special bleeding procedures that I'm aware of. But what happened was that this technician or installer, I'm going to call him, changed the radiator, filled the radiator, and then the next day he was working on other things and they had issues and other problems and the three hour job turned into seven hour jobs. You'd, so then last night, I was going to pick up parts, and he was finishing up the job. And then he said it was finished, and I was like, oh, damn, I didn't get to check that work. Stay with me. So I was like, so I called him. I said, hey, did you uh, bleed the cooling system on us? And he's like, no, I just filled it up, started it up for a second, topped it off, and then shut it off. And that's not the right process. If you don't own a vacuum uh, system for your cooling system, vacuum uh, systems work very well, but they are not bulletproof, they are not foolproof. I've had many issues with vehicles, even with a vacuum system. That's why I like to run them with the radiator cap off. If you have to vac it, vac it. If you don't, don't. I kind of like to go the old school way on it. So there's a little bit of pressure in here, so let's just see what we get. I don't advise you at home doing this. Yeah, she's hot. So, let's get this off. So, the hose here is hot. And then, the lower hose is cold. So, when your cooling system is complete, you will have heat in your heater core. And it will be plenty hot. And your upper and lower radiator hoses will be hot. They will not be warm to the touch. They, they, they will be hot. So now that I don't advise anyone opening the radiator cap if you feel any type of heat in the system. So even though this is full, I know that this is not right. So touch your radiator hoses if you can. If you can reach your heater hoses at the back of the engine, grab them too. Once they're hot, um, that means the thermostat has opened and it's pushing 
the uh, the coolant or antifreeze through the entire system and it should be good that doesn't mean that it is a lot of people think filling this is going to fill the radiator this is a surge tank or a coolant reservoir it moves fluid back and forth between here and the expansion process of the cooling system. Do not overfill your surge tank or coolant tank. They are all labeled somewhere that says blow and fill. So see that's not all the way to the top. This does not fill your cooling system. You need to access the radiator cap or the surge tank that has a radiator cap style on it. That would be your, your, your access to fill. So it will look similar to this, or it'll be a big plastic cap on the newer models. But every vehicle is different. So now this car is just gonna run. I like to let it run so I don't see any more air bubbles. All the hoses are hot. The cooling fan has cycled on and off and has not overheated. This is filling your cooling system for dummies, I'm gonna call this. How about that? Not a lot down, Thanks for watching.